We're thrilled to have you back to this, our show, uh, Human Humane Architecture on Think Tech Hawaii. And this is our 251st show, and you're about to be our 13,370th viewer. We're broadcasting live, once again, drilling straight through the middle of our planet. And we're on the opposite ends with you, DeSoto Brown, in your Bishop Museum. Hi, DeSoto. Hello, everyone. And me back in Germany at its most southern and even more uh, southern than Munich, where I usually am, here in Wolfratshausen. That sounds very exotic to you, DeSoto, <laughs> yes. right? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> and Wolfratshausen is very close to an event that was uh, uh, basically holding our attention when we were reading the news for the last couple of days. And for that reason, get the first slide up. And you please share what excited you about what we were talking about before the show, DeSoto. Well, in the first place, you uh, sent me this photograph of the big fire with people sitting around it. And I conjectured and you confirmed that this is a summer solstice celebration, which I knew they also had in Scandinavia, but obviously they do in Germany as well. And here are people celebrating that the longest day of the year, which in northern climates is something that everybody is excited and happy about. Unfortunately, it means that every day from that on is going to get shorter, leading you back to the cold days of dark days of winter. But while you were indulging in this uh, summer solstice event, you saw a whole fleet of helicopters flying over. All of them were illuminated except just one, which was dark. And you realized that that was carrying President Biden over you overhead to join in the G7 uh, conference, which was just held. And what we see in the lower left corner is an older photo from seven years ago of a similar conference that was being held between Angela Merkel, who was the head of Germany at the time, and Barack Obama, who was the president of the United States at the time. And you just pointed out to me that after this initial meeting, they have remained friends. And just yesterday, she and her husband visited Washington, D.C., and President Obama and I presume his wife, Michelle, met up with them at the Smithsonian African American Museum in Washington, D.C. So that is a nice continuation, I think. And then the G7 meeting, which just occurred at which President Biden was a participant, they were careful to take a photograph of the participants in front of that same wooden bench in that same location with the Alps behind them. And in the lower right corner, we see a picture of uh, President Biden arriving in Germany. And you said that he's being greeted by the governor of this part of Germany. And when he arrived, he was greeted by people dressed up in their various ethnic costumes to greet him at the airport. And also, this reminded you that there was a time when people got off airplanes here in Honolulu back in the 1950s, where not only did they walk on the actual pavement of the runway to get from the airplane, but they were greeted by hula dancers and Hawaiian musicians, and one of them being Kent Gerard and his hula nani girls, and that was one of their regular gigs to greet people as they got off of airplanes. So that was something that the Germans and other outsiders who might come to Hawaii want to see. They want to see that ethnicity. And when people from the United States and other countries go to Germany, they want to see the same kind of cliched depictions of ethnicity, such as Oktoberfest. So people want to go to Germany and say, oh, look how typically German this is with all these women wearing dirndls carrying around mugs of beer. Well. <laughs> Same thing goes in other countries and other locations as well. You're saying the costumes are always more colorful on the other side of the world. That's right? exactly right. <laughs> it's the exoticism. Exactly. It goes both ways, right? And Absolutely. another thing that we share a lot, and this is the native country of our consultant, our exotic escapism expert, Susanna, and this is her native town. And she took me to her festival that she went to ever since she was a kid. And you see there, there are people dressed in different ways, but very few actually. There are some who are proud to wear their traditional journals and their lederhosen, the guys. 
but usually not as people in um, Hawaii. When you go to work, you don't wear your loincloth, I assume. No, no, Otherwise, I don't. Otherwise, you can stand up and show it. If that's no, no, no. Case. It's too. It's too cold in here for, <laughs> for one thing. Yeah, exactly. So it's again, as you said, what the people want to see who visit. It's a big tourist thing. We were quoting one of the professors of architecture here at the Technical University of Munich, who during the pandemic was getting up his uh, hopes up higher for the discipline and its critical um, side. And he said, as long as Oktoberfest is in place, we will never be thinking about doing things differently because we're all happy. So I guess Oktoberfest, everyone is hoping, although you know we're waiting for another wave to come for the BA variant, uh, but hopefully Oktoberfest, as of now, it's not canceled. So hopefully it has been canceled two years in a row, hopefully everyone hopes it, it will be there again. And talking again, women power, again, we talked about Angela already, but the picture at the bottom in the middle is a very clear uh, visualization of once again, uh, the domination of the male in politics. We talked about same in architecture. We will continue to talk about that issue. And the only women in there is our uh, Ursula von der Leyen, who's on our show quite a bit. Uh, because she is the commission president of the uh, European uh, Union and has some ties to architecture, as we keep talking about. And uh, otherwise, it's the seven guys from the seven countries. And on the very right is another of your colleagues from the, from the European Union. And top right, that was me, um, my spontaneous attempt to catch, snap a picture of Joe in his helicopter, but obviously... The camera was just getting that the um, orange spot and that white line, but it is, you know, that that is him. <laughs> so um, with that, we get to the next second slide to you to the other end of the world. And I want to share what impressed me about your similar experience uh, when you were little. Uh, you had already been uh, shaking hands with LBJ, Lyndon B. Johnson, at the intersection of Dole and University Avenue when he was visiting, if that's correct. That is correct. that correctly. You do, you have, do. And we have a show quote up on the top right for that reason. But you had that exact similar experience that I had days ago with Joe Biden. Uh, you at that time with Lyndon B. Johnson, because he was flying over you, Diamond Head, your home, when he was helicoptered to the Kahala Hilton, which was designed by our friend Ron Lindgren's uh, partner in business and friend, uh, Edward Killingsworth, that we also see there, um, you know, next to you on that, on that show quote. Uh, we also saw LBJ in a movie about E, uh, P, as they called him a couple of times, which is the new movie uh, about Elvis Presley by Baz Luhrmann. And uh, Yoni and I went there almost accidentally, I have to say, but it was, it was worth it. And we were both, uh, it was sort of a more a film club and not a movie theater in the basement of a town hall. And we were actually um, hoping to see um, Another thing that's very closely related to uh, Hawaii, which is Jurassic World. I have to do more research. I think this is actually playing, well, I know it's playing on the mainland this time. So I'm maybe we lost uh, them to shoot on the island. This is also uh, borrowing a little bit from our friends, Jay Fidel and George Kaysen, who have a movie show going on. So we're stealing a little bit of that from this review here. And um, we have to say, uh, Baz is uh, Australian, not that that matters, but maybe it uh, apologizes him more that he took an angle that we think is rather isolated. And why is that, Soto? Well, uh, you told me, I have not seen this film, but you told me that it really emphasizes Elvis being in Las Vegas. And the reality of his life was that he was very fond of Hawaii. He made three films here. He liked to vacation here. It was something that he felt very close to and really liked and something that really affected his life. And one of his most important concerts was right after he got out of the army, having been in Germany, your homeland, he gave a concert here in Honolulu to, as a benefit to help raise money to build the USS Arizona Memorial at Pearl Harbor. And we have talked about the architect of the Arizona Memorial and the architect was from Austria, a German speaker. 
And so that Alfred Price has a connection to you, Martin Despang, uh, at least in the languages that you both, the language you both speak. Well, even genetically, spoke. because I'm half Austrian. That's true. That's Austrian right. Mother. That's right. So yeah, not that that matters. But we have to say his other appearance, even bigger, was captured very briefly. However, in the movie that's at the bottom, second to bottom left, uh, his um, um, uh, show at the, uh, which is now the Blaisdell Center, uh, which was the first broadcasted around the world by a satellite conference, uh, sorry, concert. <laughs> and uh, the picture below is some snapshots from that. But architecturally, the little choke quotes there, the second to bottom right, uh, as we were pointing out in that show about if we can call it, it's not officially, but from its sort of floor plan and its shape, it is a sibling hotel, which is the Ilikai that pretty much has the same configuration as the hotel that Elvis uh, stayed in and played a lot of shows according to uh, Baz's Gorman's angle, too many shows, which wore him out and is part of the reason why he was so burned out and after that. Um, but we're saying, um, uh, I, I just happened to stumble over uh, the, the many movies that they've been making about Elvis, a dozen or more. So this is probably not the last one. Who do we know? Eric Bricker, we know, who wants to make a movie about Edward Killingsworth. Maybe he wants to do one about Elvis. And since he's now through uh, uh, basically, uh, you know, Ed acquainted well with Hawaii, maybe he want to do one about the uh, the the angle of Elvis in Hawaii because there's a lot to find about that as you said Elvis said it's one of his favorite places you know sort of his second home we're also borrowing from our own show to be continued which is comparing automobiles and architecture at the very bottom right that's the picture that um, I was the happiest that I was able to uh, snap a picture of that shows the two, our two cultures, the Soto and the one that Elvis um, experienced, because as you said, for the military service, he was in Germany. And I guess uh, in reference to that nostalgia, he had a Mercedes 600 that we're gonna show, talk more about when we reconvene the automobile architecture show, which is the most luxury fleet model there was that uh, Mercedes did and the equivalent to that one in America is guess what and what do we see and what building is it parked in front? Well we see a scene which is a depiction you said of Elvis meeting up with his ex-wife Priscilla next to the airplane that he owned the jet which was called the Lisa Marie after their child and Elvis comes to this meeting in the, as you said the Mercedes 600 Priscilla is driven there in a Lincoln Continental limo. And in the background, we see the iconic building of the centerpiece of the Los Angeles International Airport, or LAX, as we often call it, which is currently sitting empty, but they're trying to figure out what to do with it to reuse it because it housed a restaurant originally. And uh, they're thinking maybe that it can be possibly reused as the TWA terminal at JFK in New York City has been reused to be turned into a airport hotel. And both of those are iconic mid-century modern structures, which are very emblematic of the airports that they are located at. Absolutely. This one is called the Theme Building. It's by William Pereira, who's also the architect of the Pan Am Pyramid High Rise. Uh, because we were returning to high rises here uh, very soon. But uh, before we do that uh, next page, which leaves us here in the area because I'm broadcasting from my sister's, not the office home that exists as well, but her home office. And that is very close. That was a few days ago when she was getting caught up in traffic um, jams caused by security. So you see a German police car and you see the uh, sign that leads to Garmisch Partenkirchen, another tongue breaker name of a city similar as to Wolfratshausen, which is the one here is. And that got crossed out because he couldn't get through there because this is where the summit was happening. The uh, environmentalist leaders here are uh, very snarky about the conference because um, again, the, the journalists were wrapping them up as I as you said at the beginning, it's, it's about you know, the Ukraine war, it's about fossil fuel related and it's about climate change. And they said, you shouldn't even 
uh, put the word climate change or sustainability in your mouth by what you have done with the vast majority of very you know fuel uh, intensive helicopters, police cars, thousands of them. So they found this rather contradictory here. And um, yeah, this this picture is a reminder of that. The picture is also a reminder of that very. And another criticism was that they were at this the the castle. Uh, that was the conference was 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 held. Elmau, the castle Elmau, is usually a resort, so they found this all too high class. But then again, that reminds us of your experience because the Kahala is a high end resort. So there's another similarity between between our places. But our region here is also, as you can tell, very rural, and they've got a lot of cattle here, a lot of dairy, and a lot of farming still. And that is something gets us to uh, as if you know all the challenges weren't already enough, but through the intertwining uh, issues we have, there's another one on the on on the horizon that uh, is hitting us hard all around the world that has to do with security as well. But what kind of security, DeSoto? It has to do with food security, and this is because the supply chain, first of all, as we all know, was disrupted by COVID. But we now also see the Ukraine war as being extremely significant in this because Ukraine was and should still be a major exporter of wheat. And it was supplying wheat to a number of other different countries. Well, with the war that Russia has started against Ukraine, that has been disrupted as well. So this is not something that's going to go away very quickly. It's something that's going to be concerning us for a while. And the more we are self sufficient in food, the more we grow ourselves, the more we have homegrown food that does not need to be transported thousands of miles, the better off we are all going to be. Yeah, and an example for that showcase at the top right uh, last week is the kindergarten we designed for Göttingen, the university, and that one has an intensive green roof where the teachers are supposed to grow, you know, vegetables and herbs and fruits. And uh, then, as you can see them there in the kitchen in the baskets to uh, basically process them. So they learn how to cook and they learn how to grow. Uh, that's absolutely the way. And what's not the way is at the very top left, the show quote, this is how the developers of the Alamoana uh, area want to make us believe that they are green, they are not. They're orange or red as an alert lamp with that color, because this is all invasive hermetic uh, nature and not the way. So can architecture solve that? Next slide. This is our countercultural proposition to that matter. These are the primitivas three that are sprouting out of the fertile ground, very fertile ground of Hawaii. And uh, to the top right here, we have our movie uh, show pair, Jay Fidel and George Payson. But in that case, they were talking about the Primitivas 3. And Primitiva 3, uh, George was a productive member of developing Primitiva 3. And he basically convinced us with his expertise of nutrition because he is a raw vegan. And after serious discussions, how to basically make a living in Primitiva 3, he said, guys, if you want to have, you know, wild stock in there, uh, how are you going to deal with a slaughtering mess of blood and bones? How are you going to basically, that's not biodegradable, uh, and that's a sanitary issue. So he basically convinced us that for that semester, for that journey uh, to join him. And we said he looks in his being in his mid seventies. He looks mighty good. He looks more like fifty. He looks better than some guys on the screen who have little hair left. You know, speaking about myself, of course. <laughs> so he has. That was one of the funny questions of the one of the things Jay addressed, who joins us as far as the hairstyle is concerned. Yes. So this is turning back to serious. This is serious that buildings should be performative. And they should uh, address all these issues of, again, um, of, of, of climate change. They should be off the grid. They should be self-sufficient. They should be like nature does. And we have to be able to make that work. And uh, we're the team of Primitiva, all the Primitivas and more, 
um, basically tropic gearing, as we call it, as we will share with you guys at the very end of the sequence here is very, very optimistic. But the question is, uh, the sort of how do we promote this more? And that maybe gets us back to politics. We've been talking about in our state, uh, Senator Chang has an ambitious goal to take a delegation to Vienna to look at uh, better or at all social housing practices and bring this back to the islands. That's very honorable uh, of him. But maybe we also need, uh, you know, well, we need everyone, but we need politicians and then get back to the next, or get to the next slide. And with that one, we are revisiting someone. You had just been recalling him on the first slide, right? Who's that again? Well, this is the new home that's being built by President Barack Obama, former president, I should say, in Waimanalo. And it's on the site of what had been a private home, a large estate. And many of you would have recognized it from its frequent appearances in the first edition of Magnum PI TV series. Well, it's been purchased. It's been that home has been demolished and this home is under construction. And that, of course, will be one of Barack Obama's vacation homes. But the irony, of course, is that while this new modern structure and obviously very comfortable structure goes up, there are people literally a stone's throw away who are homeless and living in tents. And it also is an ironic part of this that it's built right on the ocean, it's built right on the seashore, and we confront the problem of rising sea levels due to climate change, which also affects our food supplies as well. So it is a beautiful home, and there is the PIing mobile parked in front of it, but there are other concerns that are raised by its construction and where it's located. Yeah. And our PI mobile that we know from many shows and also boring at the top right, this is uh, a draft from it being addressed in that show to automobiles architecture to come, but we can have a little bit of a preview because it is the car of Magnum's friend, Orville Rick Wright, who, who drives such an SL that we got donated from locals around your diamond head for around $5,000. So it's not quite as exclusive anymore as it, as it used to be. It's more inclusive to us at least. But uh, the building, you know, is again, we're paparazziing it, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, the picture on the top left, although it's rather visible and it's not uh, basically fenced off yet. So you don't need to peek too much. It's pretty uh, clear there. Again, we, we wait until the very end to make our final report, but this one shows it's based on your criticism of being coastal fronting the ocean. Um, it's basically a stick frame construction. So, you know, we, one of the uh, uh, proposals we had been working on the last semester, which were the Bull Creek Valleys, they are working with autoclave aerated concrete, which is a cementaceous material that is not vulnerable to being eaten away by termites who love water and also not being so vulnerable to be washed away by storms. So, and then here you might say, well, that doesn't look like stick frame. And that's maybe the first kind of a preview uh, criticism glimpse here. There's some tiles glued onto it. So it pretends to be more of masonry, but it's in fact just a, a skin or some makeup. But Again, the buildings we will report on once they're finished. Uh, so hold your breath for that one uh, until we move on to the next side. Because again, um, uh, you know, barracks, um, also it's locationally rather rural, rather suburban. So that's not gonna solve the housing crisis and issue we have on the island. But this project here is, and you know this much better than I, because you interviewed the architect a while ago and. Um, we made a show about it. That's absolutely right. And I was going to say that this is one of the, um, and you're going to have to remind me about this, but this we see in the top right, the, the Volcrete or at least pre-stressed concrete slabs being installed and being, <clears throat> excuse me, handled. And that's one of the important things that you just brought up because this is not only more durable, um, but it's also not as perhaps not as energy uh, energy requiring 
but it also uh, is easy to put up because once you build those labs, once you create those labs, you can put them together and assemble them. It's almost prefab. It's kind of bordering on prefab. So that's one of the things that uh, really makes this uh, a desirable type of uh, construction. This was a, although in this particular case, as I remember, this building was not so much from scratch as it was a remodel or a renovation to turn it into loft uh, environments or loft interiors from uh, what was already there from a low, sort of a low end building, concrete building to make it a little more desirable, but also a lot more livable. Well, it's architects are Bundet Kanistakan and, and Jainas. Uh, and it, it is actually a new building, but you're right because it's very inspired by the building they live in. And it comes across as, um, as it's always been there. And it is all prefab, it's all concrete. It's done with gray specific Rocky Mountain precast. So for us, it's one of the best examples of practices how to do things on the island to solve uh, the housing crisis. And it's also not uh, so far away. We can get the next slide up, which will have to be our last one because we're getting to the end of the show. But using that last minute here, it's actually cutting close back to our area around Ala Moana and going back to uh, Barack Obama because the two show quotes at the top is where Obama grew up with his grandmother yeah. in this building, uh, which um, was designed by Park Associates. And we address, if you want to know more about that, um, watch, watch the show. Uh, it's probably fair to say that Barrick was uh, a little bit more privileged. Um, uh, he still lived with his grandma, but he went to Punahou, uh, which, you know, others had the chance as well that you know very well. So, <laughs> um, and uh, in the next uh, week, in the next show, continuing this one, we want to talk about other people that are known who were even less fortunate, but also could be great advocates to lobby for a more social housing. And so we can already figure, you get a glimpse of one of them at the very bottom, but we're at the end of showtime, so we have to leave this for next week. And so, I can hear dogs barking in the background. Exactly. So usually, I, I'm usually the one with the dog, but this week you've got dogs. Exactly, yeah. That's Aaron and Gretchen. Gretchen oh, yeah. is a sausage dog, and uh, Aaron is a Weimarana. Yes, I wanted to compete with you. So we want your dogs back next week. You got oh, we'll see. From we'll home. see. <laughs> all right. So uh, until next week, stay all tropically exotic, exotically tropical. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.